maybe feels good to you to be going back to your home again, yeah? Annie, hurry yourself. Henry for the train will be late. It is done, William. I give you thanks, Annie Decker, and your good husband, William, for the many kindnesses you both have shown to me and my boy. I never forget. You must visit us soon again sometime, Henry Johnson. And in Goshen, may you prosper and multiply. Prosper, I hope so. But multiply, I ain't so sure. You forget I'm a widower yet. I take the coat, Henry. It's very warm. You won't need it. Station go. But Papa, Matilda's my pig. Tommy gave her to me for a goodbye present. Did you earn the pig, Reuben? No, but Tommy gave her to me. Tommy should drive you to the station where the boy is. I give you thanks, Tommy Martin. I hold it kind of you. In my day, I was taught we took nothing if we did not earn it. Ah, oh, today maybe a snow vase. Oh, but Mr. Johnson has the egg on Uncle William. You know, Louise is my hen, and the day behind last, Mr. Johnson cut for me a new switch to drive in the cows better. He has her. Thank you, Tommy. On the train, I must not break it. I give you goodbye, William Decker. I give you goodbye, Annie. Goodbye. Please, William, I would like to give goodbye to Martha at the station. For oh, why? There's much work to be done. But, William, I would like... I ask you, please, William. Fighting good, I guess. When I get back, I find out still. And pretty soon you, Rudy, and Martin will be swimming in Schneider's pool. Yes, <laughs> when Schneider ain't looking. <laughs> <laughs> no time for swimming here, or fishing either. Why don't you get your mother to take you back? Well, since my father died, we have no money. Here you are. I give you a hello, Mr. Terwilliger. Hello, Tommy, my boy. Martha, I was thinking. Yes, Henry? Oh, I was just thinking. What was you thinking, Henry? When a woman's had her own home once, to live under someone else's roof maybe is not so good, huh? No, it is not good. My sister's husband, William, is a fine man, but... Why do you say that, Henry? It was just a thought come to me. When a man's alone, he gets lots of time for thinking. Tommy, hurry up the horses. Get him! the next farm has a mule and a car? Yes, indeed. It's a white mule. Yes, sir. Um, is he a Mennonite? Ah, fine. He's an outman. He's not a Mennonite. He's like you. He's an outman. Okay, that suits me. Well, push on, my hearties, before something else falls apart on this old crate. <laughs> yeah, and I expect all you six cylinders to operate now. Remember that.
Well, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. You have all done your work nobly, and I shall reward each and every one of you materially. Now, here we are. Now, there's a jelly bean for you, and a jelly bean for you, and one for you, and you, and you, and there's one for you. Now, now how's that, huh? <laughs> you, what's, what's the matter? Oh, perhaps you prefer a black one. Well, all right. Yeah, there's a black one for you. Howdy. You, oh, howdy, howdy. Uh, the boys here tell me that you uh, had a cart and a mule. What do you mean, had a mule and cart? Well, I'm going to own them. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, now, don't be obstinate. Eh, uh, better run along, boys, huh? Thank you very much once again. Don't let the candy make you sick. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wainwright? Uh, my name's Smith. Yeah, Mr. Smith? No kidding. Well, well, well. Uh, my name is Samuel T. Williger. Swappin' Sam, they call me. Mr. Smith, do you realize that you're living in a mechanical age? I got a radio. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm not selling radios. Mr. Smith, fortune has smiled upon you this day. You are about to become the proud owner of this beautiful automobile. Oh, now, now, wait, now, don't say that. <laughs> Just think of the things that this automobile can do that that, uh, that that mule of yours over there can't do. My mule can do things this car can't. Well, maybe so. Well, what, for instance, such as? Look, let me show you. Well, what do you know about that? Yeah. You mean to say any time you whistle to him like that, he'll come to you? Yep. My, my, my. Mar marvelous world we're living in, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> yes, it is. I'll show you something else. Giddy up. See? When you say giddy up, that makes him sit down. Yes, yes, I can see that. But what makes him get up? He's on my foot. Abracadabra. That's perfidious. See, bloody black blue. Is that what makes him get up? Yeah. <laughs> well, where'd you get this mule? Got him from a circus fella. He trained him. You and I ought to be able to do some business, Mr. Smith. Now look here. Uh -huh. Mr. Smith, don't know how I'm going to come out on this deal. Well, anyhow, you got a mule that does tricks. Did you hear? Wait till you try that automobile. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I better write them down. Abra. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what is it? Abra. Abra, yeah. Abra. Abra. Bus. 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 Good is. <laughs> See Buzzy. Yeah, see Buzzy. Flat blue. Yeah, fine, fine. All right. Whoa, Chippendale. Go on, Mr. Smith. Go on. about my farm in Goshen. I've been thinking again. You heard yet from nobody who wants to buy it? No. But Henry Johnson says the house is still good and... Hand me the mashed potatoes. William, Martha has talked with me. She would like to go back to Kansas and work her farm again. You could lend her the money to go... And me the saw. On the train, it cost $92 for Tommy and me. I would pay it back. A woman cannot farm 100 acres. Here you got a good home. You had best put it from your mind. Since my husband died, you've been kind to us here, and we are beholden to you. But Tommy is three years older now. I'll help Uncle William. A woman and a boy cannot run a big farm without the advice of a man. Oh, well, Mr. Johnson would advise Mother. Well, he'd be glad, I think. You know, Mr. Johnson likes Mom. What are you saying? Down, Martha. When Henry Johnson was here, did he speak with you? No. You think Henry Johnson has intentions to you? Why, I... Oh, William, have you not eyes? But Henry was here, could you not see? Henry Johnson is a good farmer. His farm is next by yours. I write him a letter. He will send you the $92. See, Mom? Oh, no, William, you can't. I can't. 
I will when I'm done eating. Henry Johnson, have you intentions to marry with my sister-in-law? If yes, please send fair so she and her boy will come by train. If no, they can stay by me. Please to answer yes or no, William Decker. William, please don't. Oh, Annie. William, you... Thomas. By the post office, you should take this when you are done with your voice. My boy, how many times have I told you never to give anything away? Well, then you give me hello right back. You, all right, hello right back. I got him. Y you got what? When you were here before, you told me maybe old papers I could find, newspapers. So I've got a pile that high. Yeah? I've got to have $92. You, $92? Mike, what are you going to do, get married? No, Mr. Williger. We want to go to Kansas. You, oh, you want to see the world, huh? No, Kansas. <laughs> yeah, how old are those papers? Well, one of those papers says Abraham Lincoln is shot, and another one, Andrew Jackson, died already. Well, now, wait a minute. They might be worse. No, 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 no. Everybody knows that about those fellas. All of them are no good. Uh, no. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll take them off your hands. Yeah, uh, I, but I won't give you 92 bucks. Whatever you give me, I'll take. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll be over at your place around 6 o'clock tonight. All right, Mr. Tewilliger. I have them ready. Uh huh? I mean, goodbye, Mr. Twilliger. See you later. <laughs> Giddy up, the dog's gonna hold oh, Chippendale.
it ain't, is it? No, it is a devil song. by Rush Springs. Mom. Yes, Tommy? Mr. Johnson won't get that letter. He won't get it? For why? Because I tore it up and buried it. Tommy, what are you speaking? I did it. That letter was trusted to you to do so with it. That was a sin. But Tommy, by and by should come an answer from Mr. Johnson. He can't answer a letter you buried on him. Then what will your Uncle William say? Mom, we gotta go to Goshen soon. And I'm gonna earn the money. How, Tommy? Well, Mr. Terwilliger, my old newspapers here will buy off me. But $92. Good evening, Mrs. Barton. I give you good evening, Mr. Judd. Mr. Decker in? No, he went to the money house to put in. He'll be coming back soon, yes. Well, here's a little more he can add to his pile. Can I leave it with you? It's for the tobacco he brought up to the warehouse. Oh, of course. $100. Will you sign the receipt, please? Well, I'll get it, buddy. Tommy, put the money by Uncle William's desk. Goodbye, Mrs. Martin. Give you goodbye, Mr. Judge. Goodbye, son. I guess you goodbye, Mr. Judge. Oh, well, Mr. DeWilliger, well, one minute I bring them. Tommy, but why all the shouting? It's Mr. DeWilliger, Mother. Don't, don't go away, Mr. DeWilliger. I'll be right there. I mean, now, let's see what you've got here. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln assassinated. My, my, my. Well, Tommy, I should say that was worth 25 cents. <clears throat> 54, 40, or fight. <laughs> well, that's worth a quarter. <clears throat> What's this one here? Stock market hits a new low. Well, that's no good. It's hit a lot of newer lows since then. <laughs> uh, here's one from Philadelphia, where you come from. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Philadelphia, huh? Well, athletics win pennant. <clears throat> my, 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 that is an old one, isn't it? But of no value. <clears throat> what else is? Well, that's not so much. No, I don't think so, then. Well, Tommy, after a hurried glance, I should say the whole bunch of them was worth about, uh, uh, one dollar. One dollar. Oh. And remember, if you've got any more, kid, there's plenty where this comes from. Philadelphia? Yeah, yeah, they make this there. <laughs> Mr. Terwilliger. Yeah? Could I make ninety-one dollars in Philadelphia? Well, now, you're a good, strong, healthy boy. Why, well, sure you could. Could I? Well, of course. Now, here you are. Make a dollar every day, and in a million days, you got a million dollars. We don't need a million dollars. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, don't decide so quickly, you know. <laughs> There's something mighty cozy about a million dollars. If you had a million dollars, you'd be on Easy Street. How'd you like to live on Easy Street, huh? Philadelphia? Yeah, it's in Philadelphia. But unfortunately, I live on the other side of the track. Easy Street is at the top of a long, high hill. I've been trying to climb that hill for many years. Someday, by hard work and good, honest endeavor, I'm going to get to the top. God willing, Mr. Terwilliger. 
Hmm? Yes, God willing. Tommy, come here. Uh, how much money did I give you for those papers? A dollar. Well, I'm going to be generous with you because I like you. I got a little present here for you I brought from Philadelphia. Here, look at that. Oh, a harmonica. A harmonica, that's it, and there it is. Oh, but I can't take it, Mr. Terwilliger. Well, why not? I didn't earn it. Yeah, now, look here, Tommy. I, uh, the last time I gave something away was in the summer of 92. I'm in the throes of a generous impulse. Now, don't strangle that impulse. Go on, please, take it, will you? <laughs> Play on it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's fine, only swing it. Oh. This? Oh my. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> You're a fine man, Mr. Fuller. Yeah, well, you just keep on thinking so, huh? However, Chip and Dale and I have got a long trip ahead of us. Oh, you going back to Philadelphia right off now? Oh, yes, yes. After we've fortified the inner man and the inner mule at Charlie's Imperial Diner, we're off. Give you thanks, Mr. Fuller. You what's that? I, I mean, just thanks. Oh, well, just thanks to you, too. <laughs> yeah, so long, Tommy, my lad. <laughs> Whoa, Chippendale. How much? Give that to me. From where did this come? Mr. Willigo gave it to me, Uncle William. So, did you earn it? No, Uncle William. Throw it down. Throw it down. Boy must be taught not to forget the good days. Tommy, don't burn the light too long. It weighs oil on your Uncle William. Look how you are, all covered up like it was winter. It seemed chilly like. Good night, go to sleep. I, uh, I guess you 
Ruben and Mr. Johnson are nearly home. Yeah. But we must not think too much of what we can't have. Good night, Tommy. Mom. Kiss me good night. Such a boy. Last week only you thought you were too big for kissing. Just for once, maybe I'm not too big. Come on, Chippy, come on, the sun's out. Come on, get up. Come out of there and with your hands up. Come out of there. Well, say, you almost got shot, you know that? You, what are you, how long you been in there? I crawled in last night while you were eating. You did, huh? Well, what, what, what's the idea? I'm going to Philadelphia. You, what, what, what with me? Uh-huh. Oh, no, no, thank you. No, not, no, indeedy. Abracadabra, <laughs> does, what? Now, see here, are you trying to insinuate that I shortchanged you? All I know is there was only $80. If $20 is missing, it happened at your own house. All I know is there was only $80. Now, see here and get this through your head. I gave Mrs. Martin $100. There's her signature. See it? She gave the money to the boy. What happened to it after that, I don't know. Why don't you ask the kid about it? Goodbye, Decker. Please, Mr. Terwilliger, I can't go home. I've got to have $91 first. The answer is still no. All right, Mr. Tawala, go for me. But if you won't take me to Philadelphia, I'll walk. All right, all right. I'll take you to Philadelphia. Come on, get up here, will you, dog? Donna, give me that bundle. There's always something to disturb a man's peace of mind. Be careful of yourself, man. Mark. When Judd came last night, he brought $100, no? Yeah, you took it off the desk. Where's Thomas? I do not know where he is. He has not had breakfast yet. I think maybe he had trouble taking the cows to pasture. The cows are still in the barn. Look in his room. Tommy! What has happened, William? Why? God. In all the years of our people, no Mennonite has ever been a thief. What are you saying? Judge.
Bert left here last night one hundred dollars. Here is eighty. He says you gave the money to Thomas. Yeah, he put it on your desk. No, no, Tommy didn't take it. He is not a thief. It's there on your desk. You didn't look good. When you find the boy, you find where the money went. No, he's a good boy. Blame is on you, Martha Martin. You did not teach him what is right and what is wrong. Oh, William, he will come back and prove that you are wrong. We will look everywhere for the twenty dollars. <coughs> now then, just a few more newspapers and I'll have this old chair looking like a brand new antique. Then I'll take me down to that customer of mine in the next town. She'll buy it quick as a flash. Yeah, I hope. You see, Tommy, how easy it is to make money, huh? But uh, shouldn't it have some springs and horse hair in it? Yeah, no, no, that'd make it comfortable. And if it was comfortable, it wouldn't be an antique, would it? If you ever expect to make that $91, you watch me. I'll teach you the principles of business. You give me another paper there now. Give me a smooth one this time. That's fine. Just a few texts and we're off. Just added character. Well, let's fire on. We'll hope for the best. Huh? Get up those things there, now. We'll get going. Why, that chair has the original springs in it, Mrs. Wainwright. Mrs. Small. Yeah, pardon me, Mrs. Small. And just look at that fine, long, curly hoop. Positively. Why, when Heffer White finished making that chair, he said, Mr. Terwilliger. Oh, Heffer White's been dead. Have you? Anything to prove it's what you say it is. Oh, positively, I have the proof right. I, if I may have your pen for a moment, I, uh, may I borrow your... Uh, thank you, thank you. Hey, what do you put in this, milk? Pepper white to Terwilliger to, uh, to you. <clears throat> I'll take it. Fine. Roll along, there is it. Come on, let's make it a duet and we sing it together, huh? You ready? Roll along, there is a hill beyond the hill beyond. <laughs> no, 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 if we're going to make this a duet, I guess you better sing it alone. Much better. Yeah. 
teachings, Herr Bishop, that a boy who would sing songs which are not church songs is wrong. That a boy who from his home and live among outlanders is wrong. A boy who takes what he does not earn, such a boy could also be a thief. Yeah, yeah. Giddy up, Chippendale. There I go again. Now look here, Chippendale. I, this is no time to show off. Yeah, what were those words now? I had them here in my pocket somewhere. What were they? I, I put them here somewhere in my pocket. I, eeny, meeny, miny. Come on, Jim and Dale, be a good fella. Come on. Come on, Jim and Dale. Come on. Come on. Get get alphabetic gamma. Uh, what is that thing again? I've got it somewhere here. Let's, this bill is long past you. Please remit. Oh, come on. Come on. Where'd I put that thing? Where'd I put that thing? Where's I headed here somewhere? Look, Victor, you want to go yourself? Yeah, I am looking, I am looking. No, no, look, we're on the railroad. Well, all right, what of it, what of it? But, but there's, there's a train on it. There's a horn? Yes! Look! Suffering bullfrogs. Al Calper, Rams Metal, Cofa, Unhitching, Tommy, come on. Eat my drop, I'll eat my... Get on, come on, run over that jump back now. Come on, push down, push down. be doggone. Well, Tommy, it looks like the hand of fate has kicked us right in the pants. Whew, that was a close call, wasn't it, huh? Yes, sir. Just look at all that stuff strewn all over the place there. My... Hey. Abracadabra, bus, bus, bilious, seed, buzzy, blah, blue. Thank you. the Declaration of Independence was signed. It's wonderful. It's like one of Aesop's fables. <laughs> sworn I locked that two weeks ago when I left here. What do you think of that? <laughs> I'm, I'm 
music also. From where the music comes, Mr. Terwilliger? It comes from the Palace of Joy and Pleasure right next door. From the same place we get our air conditioning, skating rink. <laughs> you, uh, you ever seen a skating rink, Tommy, huh? No. No? Well, then, come on. I'll, I'll, I've got a box for the season. I'll show you one. Come on. Yeah, follow me, Tommy. Follow me. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter? Dusty? Oh, you can get used to that. <laughs> After you, sir. Take it easy now, Tommy. That's the boy. <laughs> Look out for that cross pipe right up ahead of you there. <laughs> oh. Philadelphia's wonderful, Mr. Dorothy. <laughs> when she's on skates. <laughs> Still, it does not stand in the letter where he is living. No, but he's well and he's working. get a letter from Tommy. Three times now, and each time with a dollar in it. So, his conscience is hurting him, maybe. But to send back the money don't wash away the sin. He's still a thief. Does he say where he is? No. Why not? Speak, speak. I don't know, William. He fears to have me tell him he must come home, maybe. No. I don't want it. And I... 
I want no talk in this house. I must not. Come on, Lyle, get this rehearsal going. What am I paying you for? Sorry, Mr. Kane, a couple of boys were late. Well, get going. Get a load of that kid. Maybe I can work him into some kind of a number. That's a good idea. Try it. Sing with an orchestra? No, sir. Uh, 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 just a minute, there, uh, Mr. King. Uh, I am Master Martin's representative. You see, anything you have to talk about, naturally. Well, hold on a minute. I'm only getting an idea. I'm not trying to hire the boy. Well, you will. You will. Uh, shall we step into your office and discuss the matter further? Hmm? You have a nice voice, son. You uh, you wouldn't say forty dollars a week, I suppose. Twenty-five dollars is my top offer. Uh, that's just what I thought. Well, twenty-five it is. And thank you very much for your generosity. There's an honest hand clasp to bind the bargain. <laughs> Tommy, I've got good news for you. From today on, you're going to be carried on this payroll as a singer. You mean to sing here? Exactly, and with the orchestra, too. How does that strike you, huh? I don't know, Mr. Tupor, but maybe, maybe I can't turn it on regular. Oh, but when you hear the salary, you'll turn it on all right. You know how much you're going to get? No. Five dollars? Five dollars every week. That's a raise of one dollar. Five dollars? Just for singing? Just for singing. Can you imagine? I guess that makes your trip to Goshen a lot closer, don't it, huh? Oh, yes. I'm thinking on that, I guess I can turn it on awful regular. And loud. Sort of in between, hang your troubles on a weather vane. Take that silly frown, turn it upside down, and press don't change your You will own a smile again. So I can keep your eyes 
Marking off another day, huh, Tommy? You know, Mr. Terwilliger, sometimes Goshen seems like an awful long ways off. Tommy, I thought you'd forgotten all about Goshen. Boy, you're getting places. You're making a lot of money. Ain't you happy singing here? Sure, but you see, singing in the polo parlor, just because it's 9 o'clock, ain't like singing when you're driving the cows home or bringing in a mess of trout. Yeah, but you could buy a lot of trout for the money they pay you to sing, Tommy. My name's up there. You bet. You rate it. Mr. Kane, I, I will. Oh, I know. You want to raise. I've never seen a fail yet. Just as soon as they see the name and lights, they want more money. Look, Tommy, I've got a chance to put this whole show into Madison Square Garden. You help me put it over, you'll get a raise and a healthy one, too. Madison Square Garden people will be here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, if the boy's only as good as they say he is, we'll take over the whole show. Didn't I tell you the boy's there, all right, huh? Yes, I'm well pleased. With him in this show, there's no height to which he can't go. Come on. Tell me, my boy, you knocked him dead. Did I? Oh, you did should be. Did I earn that race, Mr. Kane? I'll say you did. You were great, kid. Oh, I give you thanks. You know, Mr. Kane promised me a race, Mr. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Well, you run on back to the store, Tommy, and Mr. Kane and I'll talk this matter over. I'll the talk over. I've been paying $25. I'll double it. Make it $50. $25? I don't know, Mr. Kane. I'm only getting $5. Well, then you're getting $5. Five? What are you doing to, Will? You're holding out on the kid? Well, uh, Tommy, you see, you don't understand these things, you see, and, uh... Tommy, Tommy, wait a minute, listen. Tommy, Tommy, now listen, give me a chance. I can explain this thing, will you? Tommy, I feel awful. To think that you could imagine that I would... That... But well, the money's here, Tommy. I was only trying to surprise you with it. Don't you understand that? Huh? Now, look, you had this idea about Goshen in your mind, didn't you? But you're just a kid. I know what's best for you. Well, I couldn't allow you to sacrifice your opportunities. Well, you've got a voice, Tommy. And under my management, you, you, you'd become rich. Can't you see that? Where's the money I earned, Mr. Dorman? Hmm? Well, it's here. It's right here. You want to see it? Every penny of it. Now, will you believe that I was only trying to save it for you, huh? I give you thanks, Mr. Peter. Uh, well, you're welcome. Not 
Martin, where have you been? In Philadelphia, Mother. I've been working and singing. I made a lot of money. Now we can go to Gosha. Well, oh, hello, Aunt Annie. I give you hello, Uncle, will you? Thomas Martin, you stole $20. Uncle William, what are you saying? Charlie, the night you went away, do you remember Mr. Judd was by with the tobacco money? Well, yes, Mother. I, I put it right over there on Uncle William's desk. In the morning, one of the bills was gone. Uncle William, do you think I took it? In the morning, you was gone, and it was gone. I didn't take that money, Uncle William. Where is the twenty dollars Judd left here? You know I didn't take it, Mother. Where is the twenty dollars Judd left here? Oh, Mother, how can I make him believe me? Listen to this. Made by Heppelwhite in 1776. Signed Samuel Terwilliger. <laughs> <laughs> but wait until you hear it's his. Sold to I. Jones, Baltimore, for $6. I. Jones to Ella Peabody for $9. Donated by Ella Peabody to the Columbian Museum, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Shall I have it shipped back? It's in the express charges. Here, get this out of the way. All right. Listen, Williger, you've got no one to blame but yourself. But it's the ingratitude that hurts, Mr. King. And after all I've done for that boy, too. You got your words mixed, pal. You mean after all you've done that boy for? Anyway, bring him back. I'll pay him anything. You better pay him anything? Of course, he'll be up to a couple of hundred a week. Yeah. Well, well I, I think I can make him listen to reason for that. Yeah, here. Go and get yourself some decent clothes. Take my car and bring the kid back to me. Pronto. You, he's practically back now, sir. And remember, if that deal goes through, 5% of $200 ain't $190. Oh, Mr. King, my pride is deeply hurt by that remark. But off I go on the wing of Steve Pegasus. <laughs> Have you got any gas in your car? Oh, yes, sir. I put over a deal for you. I'll make you proud of me. You know what I've done, Tommy? I've inveigled Mr. King to pay you two hundred, $100 a week. Just think of that, Tommy. $100 a week. Yeah. That beats going to Goshen, doesn't it, huh? I'm not going to Goshen. Yeah, nah, now you're talking. That's the boy. That's the boy. <laughs> yeah, I knew you. You're not feeling so well. What's on your mind, huh? Uncle William, if I stole from God. Uncle William thinks you stole $20. Think you stole it? Well, now, wait a minute now. This calls for an explanation. What's $20 when you're making $100 a week, huh? Consider it, my boy. Opportunity is knocking until her knuckles are red. Fame and fortune await you. And me too, I hope. Oh, listen, Tommy, you know what Shakespeare said? There's a tide in the affairs of man when taken at the flood. Uh, well, you know that one, don't you, huh? I keep saying to myself, the money on the desk, I spilled the ink on All right, then you spill the ink on one $20 bill. Well, so, here, here, I've got an idea. Tell you what I'll do. 
I'll spill some ink on this $20 bill, and you can tell your uncle you found it. Now, how'll that do? No, no, that won't do. Excuse me for suggesting it, will you? The desk. Mr. Twilliger for the newspapers was waiting. I took them out from the chest. I caught you out from the window. It's the chair! The chair! What? What? Chair? What chair? What? What are you talking about? I caught you out from the window and the wind was blowing. Yeah, what wind? What is it? You're doing to the papers, maybe. I wish up to the chair that squeaks. Well, that's a bare possibility, but it seems to me that chair was sold. We know where it is. Come on. You're coming? You mean to say that you're going to turn your back on an opportunity like this just to hunt for a silly old chair? Now, if you let me to be... Don't you see? I've got a proof of tonker with it. All right. And after you find that chair, you'll come back to Philadelphia. Is that it? Mr. Kowalik, I want to go to Goshen. My mother wants to go to Goshen. And if I find that money, I'm going to go to Goshen. You really mean that, don't you? Well, Tommy, I never thought I'd turn down business for sentiment. Come on, we'll find out. Gone chair, dog. Get out of my way. Well, where's Mrs. Small? Reno? Well, uh, we've got to have that chair back. Sold it, sold everything. To a man in Baltimore, a dealer. Uh, uh, can you remember the name? Wait a minute, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Smith? No. Uh, 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 Brown? Uh, uh, Wainwright? That's it. What, Wainwright? No, Jones. Jones in Baltimore. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, yeah, to whom? So, to one of my best customers. Well, who is that? Ella Peabody. Ella Peabody, where does she live? Uh -huh. Yes, here's a good one. She presented it to the Columbia Historical Museum in This, ladies and gentlemen, is a typical room of the period of 1860, at least between the American federal period, which we have just seen, That's and the Victorian period. My George, it looks like it, don't it, huh? Oh, but it don't squeak. It don't squeak, no. Uh, let, let, let me have a feel of the mess in there, would you? No. Nope, that ain't it. Tommy, I mean, let's look at this catalog, see what we can find here. Maybe we can locate it somewhere, huh? you who are familiar with the Victorian period, this exhibit should prove very interesting. We have some excellent Victorian pieces which... Are they wax? I beg pardon. Are they wax? Wax. My dear madam, this exhibit... You will please not sit on any of the furniture. Oh, oh, <laughs> good morning, good morning. Let's ask this fellow here. Now what? They want the chair. The old rocker, Mr. Parks, told you to get rid of it. Yes. Well, whatever I've done, Mr. Parks gave me orders to do it. He's burned it up already. No, uh, uh, did you burn the whole chair? Uh, it was the seat we were looking for. The seat was stuffed with newspapers, very valuable newspapers. Already today, I burnt up two whatnots and a gold chair with cupids on it and a lot of other junk. Now, whether I burnt this particular chair or not, I wouldn't know. You see, I only work here. Yes. And I take my orders from Mr. Parks. Yes, yes, Mr. Well, you're asking me questions. Look here, Tommy. Tell me of something here. Over here. This is the furnace. Mr. Mr. Mulligan, it squeaks. It squeaks the same. What? You, 
Are you sure? Let's hear it. Let's see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's it. I think that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, 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 have you got a knife? Yes, but I want it back again. That used to belong to Donald Boone. Uh, let, uh, let's put it up on the box there, Tommy. We can work it easier. Pull all that stuff over. Hmm? That's it. Now we'll see what we can see. William Decker, you should humble yourself. You should ask the boys forgiveness. Thomas Martin, I ask. Well, Tommy, Tommy, I guess I'll be rambling along. I got my own career to think about, you know. So long, my boy. Well, I, I give you thanks for everything, Mr. Dwarker. Well, you say no more about it. And someday, whether you like it or not, I'm going to visit you in Goshen. God willing, Mr. Dwarker. Yeah, God willing.